had a dream last night that it was the last day of high school. I was in my fifth period class, and my teacher at TA Ford had caught me helping the students cheat. But she wasn't going to snitch. But she was giving me the longest lecture. And then my ex got involved somehow in a bunch of other shit. It was weird. I don't like shit. I don't go outside. We're going to take a deeper dive, see where Earl is going with this, and just obviously we're going to be reviewing it. We're going to go over the criteria first, with the first one being rating it as a lyrics, whether the song actually has a coherent flow, the words make sense, and it's just, it's just jabbering on, or there's like a point where he's just kind of mumbling off where it doesn't really, it, it basically takes away from the actual lyricism that he may try to portray. The second one is in, as an art form. Does this make me feel any type of way, an emotion, a memory, or anything at all? Basically, is it something that I can come back on? I'm like, yeah, that was like this, or that reminded me of that. Basically, is it is it a, is it a true art form in the sense that it makes you feel some way or another, some way or another? Thirdly, we're gonna go over is the production value, and I'm not a producer. I'm gonna say it's every time I review an album. I will not judge this all that hard on production, though it is noticeable when an artist does put more effort or less effort into something. That being said, I'm going to hold off on, on production value, how we're going to talk about that for the majority of this album, because it's going to come at the end. And lastly, it's just all the way through. Do I listen to this album all the way through and have no problem with it? Are there songs I just want to blatantly skip? Are there other songs where it's like, yo, I can keep listening to this, but um, that, that being said, let's just get right into this. The first song we have on the album is called Shattered Dreams. It's a soft tone type of song that does a great job for training a message of why did you let me keep going when you knew I was going to fail. It's kind of like, it reminds me of when like the Looney Tunes characters are, are going off a bridge but then there's no bridge and they don't fall until they look down. It's kind of like Earl looking at, a, at another perspective of it. Of he's looking at himself do this once again after the realization of failure where he walks on but he also is commentating on someone being right there with him but then they stop. Uh, holding his hand while they're walking together and they let him fall off like on his own The song also seems to talk about how there's so much somewhat of an edge with this whole uh, Process of it where he kind of knows things are wrong But he's still going with it anyways because of a certain feeling he has in his stomach that like maybe success is right around the corner This little chop ups add an extra oomph to it. It's something original to Earl and it's I think it's incredibly well produced So I give the song a 10 Coming up next, we have Red Water, which has a similar tone to it, but more of a spastic uh, instrumentals with it. As it's being purposely broken up and distorted, like a broken record. Because if you guys, for those of you who guys don't know, when you had a scratched record, because you had to have the record player, it would just repeat a line over and over again. Um, and it goes, this isn't the first time Earl has proclaimed himself a king or any sort of assist of a higher status. This time, he, But this time he really pushes the issue with the whole, his mother and father and friends are also pushing him up to believe this. So it doesn't help that it doesn't help to his attitude of how he betrays himself. Um, in general, this time he's having he's having people smear his name, or he believes that people are. So now in this song, he's confronting them about it and basically pushing them like, "What's up? What are you gonna do about that?" And basically just trying to prove prove a point that although you may say something over on the internet or just about him to other people, you're not willing to say anything to his face or be disrespectful in any way when he's actually around. That being said, I can't give the song more than a seven because it's not something it's not it's not like we haven't heard it before. That being said, moving on to the next song, we have "Cold Summers," which is more of a freestyle like song because it, it doesn't have anything that is necessarily the, the the centerpiece of the message as it constantly changes what it's trying to say, starting with the girl and just up, and then it changes to uh, just hanging out with a bunch of friends, basically starting to get high and write some shit in the in the on the couch, basically just kind of having a a regular hangout. Uh, but then it switches over to calling out fake fakes not not fake rappers or fake people just fake people in general as a um, As like a, as a whole group I guess you could say the song is so short I didn't even realize it ended though because with much of this album You can listen to it the whole way through not realize that songs are changing because of their all They're all produced for the most part in the exact same way But we'll get into more of that later But that being said this song with how incredibly short it is and the fact that it doesn't have any distinct message and even the messages themselves aren't even all that uh, clear or all that uh, impressive in, in the way he tries to go about mess saying them, I have to leave the song on just another seven. Coming in number four, we have Nowhere to Go. Earl speaks about having lost his way and I don't know, pick the mic up again. It, that, with that, that being said, I almost feel like I've heard that before and that's the problem because I have, but that was back from when Eminem was doing that. I think it was from his album, The Curtain Call, 
because this isn't the first time. And that means that Eminem did that like two or three different times in, in different songs. And Earl, this time, Earl's always had somewhat of a of like a depressing vibe with his music, of a softer tone, a sadder tone with it. And I have no necessarily problem with that. But that being said, I'm not a fan of artists somewhat rewording their songs and just kind of slapping it back out there again. Anyways, he, he goes and he talks about how he can't pick up the mic again until he finds himself. And when he does find, find himself, he wants to redefine his image and just basically change overall what people think of him. And I'm guessing his music and not himself because I think Earl's perfectly fine with who he is as an individual. Same thing with Tyler the Creator and the rest of the Odd Future Gang and all that. Uh, later he transitions to wanting to be better and even in the lives of the or and the Lord wanting to be better and just the overall now that I've kind of come to this realization that I want to change I want to be something different I kind of want to make uh, I wouldn't want to say make apologies or anything like go like oh hey you know this it is what it is can we make up I don't it's not like that I didn't come off of that like the at that like the but it's whatever though because it just ends on like the casual flexing rap like talking about chains and all that so I think it started off strong But then the longer it went on it dwindled and with a lot of these songs because there's more tracks on this Yet the amount of time the actual album has compared to his last one is shorter. So It's kind of like there but not if you guys know what Battlefield is like with the Battlefield uh the one in the Battlefield 5 stories, they have like little short stories instead of a full on campaign where like you get a glimpse of like someone's little story and it kind of ends before it really gets going. Though it is decent for what it is, that's kind of what it's kind of what I'm getting so far from this album. But December 24 was, a, was the first song that really stuck out to me. Ironically enough, I didn't even realize this album had dropped because I'm not really. I have never been that big of an Earl fan, though I have enjoyed his music to a certain extent that. I felt comfortable uh, reviewing this album think, thinking, hey, I'm going to like this. And I was just on Spotify looking at the songs that, hey, this was made for you. And I saw this song and I was oh, hey, it's Earl. I'll listen to this. And then I went to uh, more of Earl to see, well, let's listen to some other songs maybe I haven't listened to in a while. And that's when I realized the album was had just dropped, right? So the song is generic and is messaged with a come at me tone. Though the verses are delivered so seamlessly and they're just... They're just done so well. It's that Earl that we kind of know, that classic Earl, where it kind of like with Chum, where he'll say lines and you don't really hear the stop per rhymes. It just keeps on going and going. But it does. It's not like a run-on sentence though. It's just the coherent. You understand it. It keeps on going. It keeps you entertained. Like it. It just makes you want to keep going to listen to the rest of the song. And you don't want Earl to stop. But then obviously with or him being Earl, he obviously has to stop to catch your breath. So then he'll put in some instrumentals or put in some extra stuff or bits and head tat here. If I had to summarize this song into two very small lines, it'd have to be, I'm ready for when the pigs came and dying is the best way you know how to live. I think I can give you guys kind of an idea of what that kind of means when you're mashing those two together. The beat perfectly flows with the words and they don't hear you don't hear any stop or stutter between the rhymes just as a constant flow that although it has its ups and downs with its tone it just keeps on going without disruption and it's just some of that classic girl again i i really can't knock this song for what it is that being said it is generic it is classic earl and i do have to give it a small notch for that i give the song a nine out of ten on the way isn't what i expected it to be because earl does have some somewhat love songs in his albums so I kind of expected this one to be that. Um, so the song is basically just speaking on how Earl is wanting to live in the moment, yet he continuously looks back on past events, and he says being anxious for, anxious for the future. A sort of label zone to find us by kind of follows the entire song from start to end with lines like, I don't know what I would say, I don't label the bags, and I perude like a native, what do I do? This is, kind of, again, class kind of like classic Earl. He's really just kind of stretching it with some of these rhymes and these lyrics. Though... He does it well enough that I don't really personally look at it and like I'm say that's bad. You know, I, I can I can look past that as as an art form and be like this is this is what Earl's been doing for a while now, so it is what it is. Anyways, the song has a has a wandering in, in an empty desert type of outro with it with the last twenty seconds. Although it has its place, it just kinda of overall disrupts the rest of the tone because you under you see it when like the outro comes in. It's just a blatant like a left to a right type of, uh, of direction would change so eh, again no, another 7 out of 10 it's 
it the more I listen to this album, the more the more difficult it becomes to distinguish it from other um, tracks and records that uh, Earl has tried to produce and just put out there. The Mint featuring featuring Navy Blue, which I gotta say is kind of a weird uh, artist name. This one kind of caught me by surprise because I think it's done very well with the message trying to portray because I haven't necessarily heard a song like this. Though the way they go about doing it, I have heard, but what he speaks on is different for, I guess, once. Uh, start, it starts off as someone being arrested, which is Navy Blue, and it's saying it's like a, a goodbye before he's being taken away. Then Earl comes in talking about the exact same situation, talking about it from his own perspective of he's seeing this happen, but he's also looking at it and thinking about it, about how he's been in this similar situation and how he's not trying to get caught up in it again. As it's been... With the line tiptoeing over glass and time falling out the hourglass, those though those though rhyme, they weren't actually the same. They weren't back to back, right? The song keeps going for longer than it should, in my opinion, as it just starts to repeat itself, which I feel like just kind of ruins what I had going for it. If this was one of the shorter songs that I feel like it should have been, I feel like it would have just ended it better that way. That being said, I think this was a nice bit of experimentation, I guess, different type of point of view, and just done well. So I give the song an eight out of ten. About halfway done, now we have the song Ben. It's a song about sticking together, whether it's, fam whether it's family or just as your friend group, which I can obviously, I think anyone else can really just get into. Like, yeah, okay, I, I, I can under I understand what you're saying. And no kind of hierarchy between you guys should ever get in front of that. That being said, things do get complicated when money gets involved, as people's true character do, um, they do come out. Because, I mean, this isn't the first time someone's ever tried to say this, even in movies with the mafia, blah, 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 blah. But it's just the way... He goes about describing it with somewhat of a, a satanic, like, oh, the devil's gonna get you type of thing. Uh, that's what I get from it, at least, personally. And things obviously get complicated when you throw money involved in it, and it shows people's true character. And when the opportunity comes to raise one's stature, whether it's above others and their, or their own group, or just as a whole, people obviously, they, they change. They, they're not, I guess, the monsters come out. I feel like that's, that's kind of what I was getting from this, though I think... It was more of an implication that Earl really wanted to come out and say. I feel like that was more... I think, I think that was good on his own part because I feel like had he actually come out with that type of line or something like that, I feel like it just kind of would have thrown things off. But anyways, the the God is referenced multiple times in, throughout the album as like a Lord forgive them for they know not what they do type of vibe. And I think this is just probably one of the better songs in the album. I give this one a 9 out of 10. Number 9, we have Lucy, which sounds... Like a half-assed attempt to preach to a group of newcomers at Sunday Chapel. Like, that's the message. Like, when he comes to rapping and he's, like, going about, oh, this and this and that. It sounds like someone just looked at some spark notes for, like, a, a sermon uh, a sermon lesson. And then they just summarize that. Like, the, the song is, like, done very well. And the way he goes about just kind of blurting things out and this and then that. That does well. It's the, it's the But that's what he's trying to portray. At least that's what I've seen from this, that he's just spitting things out. Basically, people half-assing something that's, like, supposed to be more... That's supposed to make you feel something. It's, like, people half-assing, like, a project that's worth their... It's, like, they're going to determine their, uh... Whether or not they pass the class, right? And it is, like... He just... There's really not much more I could say about this album because it's just... I mean, this song, because it's just so compact... But it's just done so, so, so well. I have to give this song a 10 out of 10 easily. Number 10 on the album, we have a surka. Otherwise, just sugar in Spanish, because that's a thing. Um, it's one of those faster paced... It's probably the fastest, if not one of the faster paced songs on the album. And it's very unapologetic with its passing of competition. Like, basically, we're all just talking about, oh, I'm passing the competition, and it's getting easier. He gets older because he he's, he's getting naturally better as a musician, as an artist. And... Uh, I, I think it's done well. I think the lyrics are something that, though not inherently original, they're just done better than, I guess, a lot of people who try to push that out there do it. So I give this song an 8 out of 10. I think it's pretty pretty alright. Eclipse is one of those songs on, the, on this album that... It, I feel like it just does too much to try to be different. Uh, the song is mostly just followed by distorted jingles that are just... Not even that far from being away from a, a shitty, a shitty horror horror movie, and it's like, uh, it it, it hurts. It kind of hurts to hear that this is like the beat 
or like the instrumentals that follow this song because it, I feel like although it does have its place I feel like it just could have been done differently that would have come out just a lot more smoother that being said the song delivers a message of I'm here to murder these fools if it was nothing but trust me I'm sober I'm not crazy while describing his thirst to do it with foam to the mouth and just take no prisoners mentality so you can make the I you can make the argument that yes this 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 uh, this distorted jingle goes completely well with this, but the overall lyricism to the song is just kind of it's some of the most generic shit I've ever heard and it's disappointing to say the least. Th this song is like borderline eh five out of ten easily. We start to wrap up this album at number twelve with Bane. It's a lone tone hype song which is directed at Earl himself for a moment of his and for a moment his mother. But it basically just when his time when the time comes and his death comes, basically don't clap for Earl, Earl at his at his funeral or any time after that because you're not clapping for him now. And basically just tell his mother that he's thankful for everything. And it it's it does a very good job of changing of transitioning from of uh, hyping himself up to. Uh, if you're not supporting me now, I don't want you to support me later type of thing. Uh, the song does turn into somewhat of a self-harm melody about halfway through, but it reassures the listener he's going to keep pushing through. And I think, although it wasn't personally my favorite, because I don't think the uh, overall message of the song was all that original, I think the production value put on the, behind this, and just overall the way he went about constructing it, I think it was pretty solid, probably one of the more solid tracks, 9 out of 10. I wasn't really sure how to rate playing possum, so I'm not really going to give this one a review, or a, I guess a rate as a song, because it's not a song at all, really. I don't, I'm probably going to get some shit for this, but basically it's just uh, the audio taken from a speech, and it would just scatter messages around it. It's about, it's not even, like, half of the song which isn't even a song. I think I think the song was like a minute and 30 seconds in total. It was just a woman gave me a speech about thank you to everyone. And then obviously, like I said, the scattered messages around. It had two people featured with it. I don't, I didn't write it down because I couldn't even tell who was who. And I'm pretty sure Earl was nowhere near on this, like just not anywhere on this actual album. And there's like a, there's a distorted soul chops to it that followed the entire song. Like just every other song, we'll get more into that. And I, again, I can't really give this a, a rate, but if I did, I had to give it a four because even like the the subliminal messages and the message are like the rhymes because they don't even really rhymes at the end that come to like finish it off aren't anywhere near as good as it could have been. And I think this track should just been thrown out. Number four, we have Peanut, and the production value just completely drops off as this experimentation just takes a drastic fall off a clip. I feel like the speakers were getting blown out at every lower, at even the lower volumes when I was listening to the song, and for what? He made references to nuts, and there's only one line that sticks out that's only there for half a second and just completely ignored after he says it, and it's flushing, flushing through the pain, depression is not a phase. Five. Five out of ten. Like, honestly, and then the last one, this is this the problem with the album that I, because this is obviously, I'm going to hold my reservations for now. Basically, the last one we have is Riot. It changes up a bit, well, not a bit, I think by a lot, as this as the tone goes from more from soul to country, and it's just a, a kind of like a guitar solo, even though it's other instruments in the background, too. That being said, it didn't need any lyrics, personally, when I was listening to it, I was like, yeah, this is pretty all right, I can, I can go with this. And then when it didn't have any lyrics at all and it ended, I was like, oh, oh, okay, they just, this thing didn't have any lyrics at all. And I just wasn't really expecting that. So that's not even a song of its own. The last three tracks were hardly songs at all. So I could barely give any of these an, a really a rating. Though, I gotta give Riot a six because that was just some good fucking guitar, in my opinion, at least. I'm not, I'm not, a, I don't know much about instruments, but I do like a nice little bit of guitar. And now here comes the actual review of the verdict. No doubt Earl is trying to redefine his image and seems to ever more try to break all the ties to his odd future days. Personally, I have more of a fan of his older original tracks from Doors, though I never could truly get into Earl as I viewed him more as a mumble rapper long, long before the term was ever overused and true as it is today. The chopped, off so, chopped up soul loops fit extremely well when it's done right, yet they don't always do it. The song slash messages 
and the tone overall just changes constantly and almost disrupts the drums and the pianos and the guitars in the background. It's chasing a complex bars, almost get in the way of any value they may hold. The instrumentals hold the songs together or they make the song fall apart. And that can be said just as well about the lyrics. The album can't seem to find the right mix of more than 10 seconds of everything just coming together. This time it's a 15 track album compared over spanning over 25 minutes compared to 10 over 30. Though I applaud his wanting to push the boundaries of rap and combining them with soul, it doesn't really work here. I haven't, I haven't, I have to give this album the lightest of sevens, like a 7.1 if you want to really be specific about it. A borderline heavy six is probably more in line personally, although I feel like the songs that really lifted up the album did, did a better job. And try as I will, I don't want to add the last three tracks to this because I feel like if you just remove them entirely, this song just gets this album just gets better but he put them on the album and whether for better or for worse he did it with a reason and that being said i had to take that into consideration and it it's just they a lot of these lines and some of these tracks like the last three all together just they don't have any place on this album but anyways um it, it has its moments but the only song i really considered and I do have it still on my uh, personal playlist in my library is, is the song December 24th. And even then, I don't know how long it's going to last. Even um, Besides that, I really couldn't find a song that I was like, yeah, I want to keep listening to this after I'm done with this album review. But that being said, there was no song that like I necessarily just wanted to get rid of. I was like, oh, dude, I'm so fucking tired of listening to this. Because for those of you that don't know, um, I, re I listen to every song on an album three to five times uh, per per listen, right? Because I listen to it with my headphones, listen to it with uh, my regular phone speakers, and then I listen to it like something on my TV where I'll just stream it onto there using Spotify, right? I listen to it in a multiple different ways or with the Bluetooth speaker if I feel the need to like give it one more listen, see if there's something if different here or if it just comes off differently, right? That, although I didn't want to push through and be like, oh, dude, I want to get done with this, I want to get done with this. It was just more of a, Although I see what you're doing, Earl, I don't, I don't have much care for it. I almost feel like, <sighs> it's hard to describe how I feel about this album, but I, let's just keep going. Um, I think the album starts off really strong, but it just drops off as the more he seems to go and just throw things together, hoping they stick. The album lives up to his name with some rap songs, but I just think Earl took two steps back as an artist trying to take a leap forward, and he needs to step even further back to see where he's really going with this. Try as he will, he's never going to fully separate his name from the Odd Future Days, assuming that's really what he wants to do, because that's that's kind of what I'm getting every time. Tyler the Creator, for example, he just he's all about that. Although he has come out in interviews and say, yeah, I don't like my old shit, or that shit was just goofing around, blah, blah, blah. He does admit that there are tracks here and there that he likes to keep, that he says, if I had to take this out of that, this is what I would keep, and just that. He he's upfront with what he has to, what, with what he wants, what he's trying to do. On the other hand, Earl, forgive me if I'm mistaken, but I've never seen Earl come out in an interview and be like, "Yeah, I fucking hate all future days. Like that's just dumb. I don't want to be counted that. I'm trying to do this, blah blah blah." And he's never gonna change hip hop or just rap as a, or whatever in any genre as much as he wants to. So. It kind of it kind of makes me wonder where is he going with this. I feel like it's somewhat of a trend with a lot of artists nowadays. I think kind of started with Childish Gambino. It was like a one two years ago where he, re he released uh, Dol um, what's that one album? We all know this. We know all the album where Redbone came out, where we were expecting to rap, but then we got something completely different. And it took some people some time to really come back to the album and be like, hey, it's pretty good, right? But this, I don't, unless you're a real Earl fan or you like some of these chopped up soul beats and blah, 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 the, the overall lyricism to this isn't anywhere near like how good I was expecting. It's somewhat generic for, uh, for the most part. The lyricism itself is pretty Earl, so I'll give it that. But then the chopped up soul beats, like I said, they get in the way of themselves. Like they, they start off pretty well, but they kind of fuck up the song because like, the beats per minute almost feel like I feel almost feel like they're off. Though there's one thing I do have to get this credit album for that I feel like a lot of albums can't do, mostly because of especially in the hip hop and rap industry, and that is I could listen to this song, to this album, one whole way through, 
and I wouldn't even realize these songs are changing, right? I actually did that. And obviously, I understand where these songs are changing from, like, because I've been listening to these songs so many times that I understand what song is what, basically. But there's no, like, stop. There's no stutter. There's no, all right, we're going to take a break. But when the beat changes, you don't really notice it. You think it's just the same song over, and it just keeps going. And I think that's fucking amazing, personally. But like I said, this thing has to be the slow, the slightest, the lowest of sevens. <sighs> but that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like, subscribe. Uh, I know I'm trying to get back to story times. But this album came out and I felt the need to review it. So like I said, just like, subscribe, and you know what to do. And I will see you all later.